Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. I have a lot that I want to explain and a lot that I want to kind of unravel in this video. This is a video I've been getting a lot of questions. If you saw in my, if you've clicked on this video, perhaps you're curious about post baccalaureate programs and ways to get into med school. This kind of explains why I decided to do a post bac program, the schools I applied to, what the application process was like, and all sorts of that. So if you're interested, just keep watching. Um, I kind of want to do a little bit of a backstory. I graduated in 2017 with a bachelor's degree in political science and English from Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Virginia. I kind of knew right upon graduation that medicine was something that I was always interested in and didn't really pursue. After working this past year, I would say around uh, April of 2020, I decided that I wanted to do medical school and at that time I was already scribing in the emergency department of a hospital and I was about to finish my EMT course. Now, I talked to a lot of schools because I was unsure of what to do, like what the best course of action would be. Given that I had a degree in political science, I didn't have the prerequisites to take the MCAT, yet alone apply to medical schools. So calling schools at, in the Virginia area, they had all said that I need to take the prerequisites at a four-year university. They said not to take it out of community college. They also suggested considering certificate programs. A lot of schools offer like master's programs or post-bac programs, and that's kind of what got me on the search of like trying to find a post-baccalaureate program to go to. So summer 2020, I was looking at different programs. I was also, you know, kind of, do I go to a university and just take them all on my own, or do I go to a post-bac program, do the whole, all my courses that way? And I ended up deciding to, to do a post-bac program for a lot of reasons. One, they have linkages to other medical schools, and by that, it's not necessarily guaranteed admissions, but if you meet the certain GPA, the certain MCAT score that they have, they're looking for, you kind of get preferential treatment when you're applying. You can know almost a year ahead that you're going to start at that medical school, and they're often always very, very good schools. Second, they're done in a very accelerated way, so it's there's two different types of post -bac programs that I found. One is for people that were pre-med that need like a GPA booster, they need to improve their academic performance. And then there's others, people like myself, where they were a different major, like liberal arts, they've already had like a career, they're going back to school to take the prerequisites that they need in order to go to medical school. So I specifically looked, I think you can, there's a website I will link below. I don't know if it's part of the AAMC, but it will list all of the post back programs throughout the United States and whether or not they're for career changers or academic um, enhancement. And it'll tell you the price, the location, the school, all that kind of stuff. So another benefit was that these programs, because they're very selective with applying, if you are selected, you know, you're in a place, you're in a program that's gonna be rigorous, that will prepare you for medical school. And of those students, you know, the very, very vast majority, anywhere from like 80 to almost 100% go into medical school upon completion. So knowing that, it was like, okay, I wanna to go to medical school as soon as possible. I also want to be challenged. I already, I have a good GPA, but I need these good grades in these classes and it's also nice to have the option of potentially linking with a medical school that the university had an agreement with so all of those were kind of like why i decided to do it i applied to a, to a total of seven schools goucher bryn mawr columbia georgetown uva john hopkins and gw um, george washington and of those seven schools, I got five rejections and I got two acceptances. Um, I got accepted into Columbia and I got accepted into Georgetown University. And I ended up choosing Georgetown ultimately because it's close to where I live. I grew up in the DC area. I know the campus very well. My family is here and it's a very good university. So um, that's kind of like why I ended up deciding to accept there. And I like that you can kind of decide how long and how quickly you want to take the classes. 
and I did also like the schools that they have linkages with. The combination of all that was kind of why I chose Georgetown over Columbia. And in terms of the application process, it depends on when you're applying. I've noticed a lot of schools, you can apply in the fall, you can also apply in the spring, you can also apply for the summer. It just depends on the program itself. And a lot of schools, they will want your undergraduate classes. A lot of schools won't even let you apply if you've taken a lot of the pre-med classes because they're, they are geared for career changers, people that don't have that, don't have biochem, organic chem under their belt, don't have physics, etc. So they want um, SAT, ACT scores, sometimes your GRE or LSAT if you have it, and a letters of recommendation, and there's also a personal statement. So it's kind of a lot like applying to college. Apparently it can be similar to also applying to medical schools. I know some schools have a whole interview process. When you apply, they also interview you and then you get a decision later on. I didn't have that experience. I just got letters of acceptance and rejection um, through email, obviously, because of COVID. But they kind of want people that have a good GPA, that can test well, that have experience, and really can state why they want to go into medicine, something that they're very passionate about for all the right reasons. So that's kind of what it is. What it is. Um, a lot of the times these programs are about one year, two years. Sometimes they have a certificate with completion, sometimes they don't. Just depends on the program. Mine, uh, Georgetown, there is a certificate at the end if you complete at least 30 credits uh, and have at least a 3.2 GPA. And a lot of the linkages, it depends, but at least like a minimum of like a 3.7 and a 5.11 MCAT score. That's kind of the uh, summary of it. I'm going to be starting in June, so planning on working as an EMT or continuing scribing until then, but I wanted to update you. Thank you again for watching. And if you have any questions, if you want me to, you know, provide any other information about post back programs, I can, but it's essentially for someone that already has a bachelor's degree that wants to go to medical school and either needs to improve their GPA or they need the classes in general and they want a really strong application. I think that there is benefit. If you want to save money, I'm sure you can take the classes at a university, but I think being in an established program at a good school sets you up for success and ultimately why I ended up doing it. Thanks for watching. Sorry this video is kind of short. I didn't want to go on too far. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to make other content about this. I'm hoping to make videos about the whole process. I start um, Chem 1 and Chem 2 in June. So, or Chem 1 first and then Chem 2 in the summer. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited. Um, so again, if you do have questions, if you're interested, just uh, feel free to leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. And also, I have social media linked below. If you want to follow me on anything, please feel free. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Bye. Lo que te gusta de mí